need to go to the path of the resonance as our primary goal. Three new ones. I, I don't know what to do with these. We were told at least a few times that we shouldn't delay too long though. Not sure what the consequence of these is, but um, I still want my party together. Alright, here we go. Lady Anshi. No, leave me alone, you vultures. Lady Anshi, the intro Intran entrepreneurial cast off of Mila Vesti's tears. She flaps her ornamented hands desperately in the air, her face stretched in sorrow and regret. As you step closer, you catch shades, flickers in the corner of your eye of what she is seeing. Luxurious fabrics, marvelous oddities, and expensive looking devices of all kinds are arrayed again around her like a horde. And several shadows are taking it all away from her. She tries to grab her treasures before they can be stolen, but her hands flap through them like mist. Please, I can pay you back. Just give me more time. Yeah, none of this is real. Yeah, there's nothing there. It isn't real. What? She blinks, and like a dream, all the shades and shadows fade away. Gradually, she recognizes him. Little brother, what a nightmare. My business has gone bankrupt. Everything was being taken from me. She shakes her head. I'm not ashamed to admit it. It's my greatest fear. Thank you for saving me from that. I feel like I've been given a second life. She looks around her for the first time. Where are we? What devilry has landed us here? We're in my mind. Our sire's resonance chamber drew us here. Is that so? She gets an odd glint in her eyes. A mental landscape, perhaps. And you and I were able to dismiss those visions with mere belief. I wonder if... He holds out one bejeweled hand and focuses on it intently. Suddenly, two vibrating crystal shards appear in the air above her head, orbiting each other, emitting a sharp wooden scent. I love this item. I import them from ha Harif, you know. They do nothing except add to the decor, but I can sell them for far more than most other things. He grabs the crystals and puts them into her pocket. Ah, it would seem this place lets me do more than shoo away shadows, yes? Okay, are you a shop? Can you produce anything you want? She looks at her hand, creating several different fantastical items, some you recall seeing from her illusion, but also failing to get others. Not anything of the pure, but some things. I can't say I understand the methodology. 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 Jesus fuck. I, I, I don't understand why my tongue can't get around that. Methodology. Methodology. Whatever. I don't. Ugh. Right. Um, can you make something that would help me? Let's see, shall we? Suddenly, several useful items appear next to her. She smiles. Take what you like. Is it, is it actually free? Yes. Thank God. On first, a gladiator's will plus one might edge plus five armor. Uh, active until next leap. Uh, is there a reason why we shouldn't take everything? Cacophony blade, heavy melee weapon. Petronel, light range weapon, on back. Um, these are the weapons of the, the people I think that we that were in the previous fight. Temporal hammer. That's thirty percent on melee weapon. Uh, I think I want the view uh, petronel. 
or her. I uh, also think. Yeah, I might have to take everything. Oh, no, you take all the healing. Much better at it than I am. There's no reason not to take everything. I don't really have a use for a lot of these things though. So while they're nice, they're still something I have not used. Um, right. She has a medium and this is a okay weapon. This is a better one. Oh come on. Come on. Uh, okay, I can't actually take that away from her. Only useful by last cast up. Literally cannot equip it. Okay. Oh. Uh, I can't equip it then. Do we have some extra ornaments? Do you know how to. No, she has to, her gods. I can't take those away. Uh, ornaments. We have these share petals. I don't particularly want to use them. Wouldn't also mind if you could uh, filter these things a little bit. Like, uh, color them by the background or something. I really have any ornaments. Just what I needed. Right. All right, here we go. Anything new with these guys? No. All right. Is Eri is still here? All right. On it. Okay, we, we do have to at least take a look at these. I mean, I, I don't know. We I got the strong impression that uh, well, we can even sleep here. Maybe it just means that you don't have the luxury of sleeping again instead of just going to a few places. Either way, I do want to at least go to one of them. Right. It doesn't really matter which one. Uh, well, my biggest worry is that we actually don't have our companions with us. Places. Ibra. Trust and honesty are our bonds. The short, spare, lean-faced Gibra is so wrapped up in his work that he does not notice your approach. Its multicolored scales look like they were patched together from an avalanche of shreds and scraps. He squeezes a strangely ticking device in his left hand, regularly checking the readings from his instruments. His, his expression changes with every glance, twisting from amusement to horror to disgust. 
rhizomes are the answers, not trees. We should never have believed in trees, roots, and radicals. They made us suffer too much. He looks up at you in a sudden surprise. You're not a lacuna. Then are you linked, you and I, by life and memory and torment? Tell me, brother, what was the nature of your illusion? He watches the device in his hands as he awaits your answer. Uh, what illusion do you mean? We suffer more in our imagination than in reality. All of our brothers and sisters have been drawn into this place to keep us here while we wait our destiny. The labyrinth constructs illusions from our fears, nightmares, and nightmares from our own self-inflicted torment. It takes the serenity of knowing oneself to, be, to free oneself. Shadow passes over his face. I was confronted by a scarred man from my past. Were I not certain that I had already truly forgiven him, I would not be speaking to you now. Uh, can we free others from their illusions? All that consists is real, and the plane of consistency is the abo abolition of all metaphor. Some can free themselves, as I have. Some merely need to be told what, that what they fear is unreal. The rest... He squeezes the ticking device again. It ticks faster and he scowls. The rest are more difficult. I suspect that if one steps into the metaphor with them, takes their hand and leads them out, they can be freed. But you must understand the nature of their regret. I have been unsuc unsuccessful in that so far. Uh, who exactly are you? He looks up from his device and blinks. Who are any of us? I am a part of all that we have met. I am that part of you that can hear what you're saying. Looking down, he gives the device two sharp taps. A theme key, he adds. Uh, are you a reflection of someone I've met? Haven't you been listening? I am no reflection, no lacuna, no construct of your imagination. I'm just like you, a cast off, merged by the labyrinth awaiting a destination. Okay. What is that device? Perhaps it also is an illusion. I seek to understand the nature of our shadows. Speaking with the others has been fruitless. So I observe, I measure, I hope. It is the latter that will be my downfall, I'm certain. What's a lacuna? Pigments, constructions fabricated from our collective consciousness. Take Loihan there, for instance. He points at a thin blue gibra nearby. He's neither a cast-off nor a reflection. There may be, there may once have been an actual gibra merchant named Loihan. I don't know. Perhaps, or perhaps he is an archetypical conglomerate. Regardless, he is a dream created entirely by the labyrinth. He doesn't even realize where or what he is. Okay, so we get a little bit of a tutorial about what's going Go. on. But what exactly are we doing here? Bra Maza, the laws. Okay. That's what I'm here for. Mazar slaps his hands at the water in front of him, as though he were banging his hands against the wall. Let me out, you monsters. It wasn't my idea. I didn't even want the damn talisman. As far as you can tell, there is nothing physical restraining him. You can reach right through the wall he's banging on. Try to understand the nature of Mazar's torment. He believes he is imprisoned in the oasis again like he was long ago, but that alone should not be enough to anguish him like this. Finally it dawns on you. His agony is not his physical imprisonment, but the fact that he was abandoned by his maker. Twice. He can't be forced free, but what he needs, what he wants most desperately, is help. He's looking around for a tool. Perhaps if you gave him something, then you could also... 
then you could be the help he needs. Uh, give him a shin. As I fear, get yourself out with this. He looks at you, seeing you for the first time, then at the shin in your hand. His eyes light up. Ha! I knew you'd come back for me, and you smuggled a shaper key past those damn keepers. He takes the shin from your hand, then he kneels down and works at some device you can't see. There's an audible click. The vibra around you swim away, and the haunted look drops from Mazak's natural eye. He looks at the shin in his hands. It, it was a shaper key. What? You. He narrows his eyes at you, then looks all around him. His Numenera eye flipping more quickly than you've ever seen it. We're not in the oasis. Of course, how could I be so stupid? How else could the resonant chamber have worked? Yeah, talk to me. This is a psychic substrate, a kind of mental dimension that connects us to each other. The changing god and every last one of his children. Even with all my knowledge and abilities, there were things about the resonant chamber that were a mystery to me. His answers a lot of them. This is the thing that links us all, the plane of our minds. He looks at you again, eyes suddenly wide and frightened. He is here too, isn't he? He would have to be if he were alive when the machine was activated. Nazav grips you roughly by the shoulders. You have to stop him. He'll be after the core of this place so he can finish the job, so he can snap us out and save his own damned self. I know, I'm, I'm going to stop him. He nods once. Good. I'll come with you, let's... He looks uh, down at his feet. They're fading away. What the hell? It spreads up to his knees, then his legs. He's slowly disappearing. Damn it, quick, take this. He shoves a device into your hand. Find him, stop him, you have to. Soon the rest of his body fades, and then Mazaf is gone. Oddly, you can still feel his voice in your mind. He might still be somewhere in the labyrinth, but you have no idea where. All burning aura. Cypher, target cell. User is surrounded by a wreath of fire and de that deals 25 energy damage to any characters in the immediate range. This would be good for Tiber. Let's go all. Show them what we've learned. What's all this then? Um, I don't want to interact with that. Let's see if there are other yes. people here. Some kind of underwater cafe. Water is warmer here, presently so. For you? Anything. I burn all Fine. Crackling heat washes over you and you instinctively shield your eyes. When you move over, move your hand, you are no longer in an underwater marketplace. You stand at the center of a village in flames. Hybeer, a bruise blooming on his swollen cheek, tries to clutch the back of a large man facing away from him. His hands go through the man as if he weren't there. Come with me, Orin. You don't need to stay there here. We can leave this place behind us and never come back. Ovin turns, fresh blood spreads around the wound in his white chest, and his face is heavy with sorrow. You never learn. It was never about the lying or the cheating. I would have forgiven all of that, fool that I was. His eyes roll over as the burning huts that only the three of you can see. They needed us. They hired us to protect them, and you sold them out. He loves him so much that it hurts. Ah, uh, remain silent. No one died. I burned the village to scare them out. I bear protest weakly, staring at the ground. But the money was good, and I, I wanted to hurt you. Oh, Ty, Ovin says, holding his full wound. You did. 
is barely visible now, as insubstantial as the black smoke pouring into the air. You taught me to see things the way you did, that the world wasn't kind, and that it broke kind men. But it was you that broke me. You taught me to hate my instincts, call myself a fool for wanting to save people. But you weren't, Fiber says, clutching at Aileen's Ellie clutching at Aileen again. This time he nearly catches hold before his finger sinks through his lover's arm, like a man trying to hold on to fog. You told me that what a good man was. I didn't listen what I heard. He lowers his head. That's why I never went looking for you. I, I couldn't stand breaking your heart again. Alvin reaches out and cups Cyber's face, holding it with hands growing solid. My heart was always stronger than you thought, he says softly, and he faces me waiting. What now? Will you travel on with him and leave me here, he says, sorrow shaping his face. With a sob, Tiber clutches at him. Hangling his fingers into larger man's clothes. Alvin steps into Tiber's arms, smoke becoming flesh, holds him, and kisses the crown of his head. We were the same, Ty and me. We both wanted a kinder world, but he stopped believing, and I let him. You didn't. You blink. It seems to last a very long time. You sense words being spoken, words that are not meant for you to hear. He says a kiss lasts in a lifetime. I'll remember that. When you open your eyes, Obin is gone and you stand in the marketplace once more. Hybe wraps reddened eyes with a slow shaking hand, light glitters of the two rings there. Uh, are there any good? Plus 3 health, plus 10% critical success chance in all tasks. Only useful by type here. Eh. Are you going to be all right? Not at all, if I'm being honest. But the day isn't getting any shorter. Ready to go? Gladly, lad. All right. All right. What's their current ornament? Relativistic damage. Uh, more resistance. Not bad. Uh, I think we need to basically just put this on now. We couldn't put it on in a fight. It gives us a little bit of a negative, but also our evasion is over 100% now. So it, it takes a huge amount of effort to actually get hits on us, physical hits. And we mostly lost armor, which is against physical hits only, so... <sighs> oh, you could use the range weapon. Not that I really used them, but no, no, no. It's medium. You have medium weapons, right? No, you have no combat skills. Okay, Rin. What do you need? Can you still cast spells? No. Cipher Adept. Conserve the next cipher used, allowing it to be used a second time. Cannot be used with items that grant permanent bonuses. Active until next leap. Ah, uh, sure. Ready to take on the world. Hiding and healing. Well, once we find Eridus, I'll talk with these people a little bit more. Um, where would Eridus be? That's the biggest problem. What else can I do in these places? Anything. Is this uh, an actual shop? Wiry Gibra gives you a nod as you approach. His lips crooked into a friendly smile. Although his relaxed posture suggests a measure of comfort with his surroundings, his hand is wrapped tightly, almost nervously, around a tattered leather-bound notebook. Inexplicably, the book seems unaffected by the water. 
though it has stalled, he says, with another nod. Census taker and demographer, Lenny Potentiary, by appointment of the Diage. He opens his book, leaning it uh, back so its contents remain hidden, and pulls out a quill pen. Might you spare a moment for a few questions? Uh, no. I see the book you're holding. You may not. Out of the question. Absolutely forbidden. He peeks inside it and snaps the chat again. As you can imagine, it is a re replete with sensitive personal information. The Gihash vouch saves the privacy of its uh, citizens, and naturally, as the Gihash's ancient, I must do the same. Uh, yeah, there might be something important in the book. I need to take a look. I'm not wasting my time I'm answering ready to learn questions. New. Oh, all right. But all I'll need you to give it back to me right as soon as you're done. He hands you the book. Far from being full of personal information, it is overwhelmingly empty. There are only five pages that aren't blank. Each is a solid color: indigo, blue, gold, silver, and red. In the center of each is a familiar, your familiar tattoo, like a del like a deletion, an absence of color. Still, something about them draws your attention. Um, start with blue, that's my color at the moment. There is a time to question and a time to obey. As a soldier, you know the difference, as a friend even. Does she really mean to put her trust in this pe pedant? His study is adorned with trophies and accolades. A particularly large one commends its recipient for solving a complex fraud permeating the entire operation of the caravanserai. Vanity. The very organization of the room. Not a clutter, but a catalog. It's a shrine to self-love. As an officer, you disappear behind your ribbons. You obliterate yourself. This puzzle breaker has done exactly the opposite. Obedience. The order is given. Your job is to secure the services of a brilliant mind for whom no conundrum has proven insoluble. To ask, to wonder, to ponder, those are tasks for another. Let the endless battle end. Let the dying stop. These are cast off memories. There's some familiarity to them, but there's nothing new in this place. But that's nothing new in this place. Okay. Indigo. Smells. Brackish water fouled with cyst. Burning hair, garbage rotted beneath the sun. It's you they're burning. Your feet are wet, but they're burning too, differently. They're flayed and the filthy salt water sets your nerves aflame. Why? Why are they doing this? Through the smoke, through the pain, you see the ruined land, poisoned, stripped, murdered. The natives want you to look at a stone tablet. They gibber about a contract graven in the rock, generations ago, a trade, a promise. It wasn't you who made it, you swear it. You swore it before, as the folk first pleaded, and then howled about a living spear they grew for you, how they sapped the land's health and drove the earth below to sea to quicken the, quicken the spear. Madness, pain and madness, your entire life. Pain and madness and fire. A few hours and nothing else. And then it will all end. It wasn't me. I wasn't even here. Death without reason. Punishment without crime. A legacy of ash washed away by a rising tide. Yeah. Getting small flickers of other cast off lives. I might as well watch, watch them all. Lying prone on the dune, the pale grey cloak and cowl blending with a drift. You are surely invisible, the distant caravanners. They can no more see you than you can detect the iron wind howling their way. They are ignorant of the line being drawn across their lives, as ignorant as the calm before as they are of coming storm. Later, this moment will matter. Not just for them, for the wind can know no master. What it sows can be reaped, its fruitless ferment, fruits fermented into toxins. Your brothers and sisters are hard to kill. Faith is hard to kill. 
Too many of them still revel in the bodies your father gave them, groveling for their half-chewed meat he is tossed away. When the flesh fails, faith will follow. No one loves a father who can't protect them. The drift begins to stir. The wind is coming, and with it, change. You give those who lie in its way no warning. Silver Across from you is a fellow caster, a fellow officer, a fellow gambler. Eyes inscrutable, hearts impossible to guess. The other players are broke. Their com company's bonuses and leaves and even material fist away at the table. Tomorrow some will die for want of shield ciphers. Others will live because the captain drew a trump card. Chance. But iterate chance enough and probabilities will become inevitable and the battle never ends. It's it's leave you are playing for, for you and your soldiers. Nearly every company is being sent to Anzao to deal with the Chalcedon assault, but one lucky band will have a milk run and a good debauchering. Not yours so. though, the cars in your hands are low, you know your bluff will be cold. Tomorrow your grunts will be in the thick of it, and this lock nibber will be playing nursemaid to the Aeon Priest. Luck, dumb, dumb luck, grinding beneath with all pride and striving. You're singing. You were born singing. It shifts your senses away from the smells. It sh shifts your mind away from the shame. You like the doing of it, the escape from being trapped in your own thoughts. You've seen others that he made. Cast us, strong, fast, and beautiful, human, even a gibra once, swift, swift swimmer, smelling of burnt copper. To yourself in the dark, you sing of them and the lies beyond the ghetto bounds. You could leave, couldn't you? Any action, any change would surely be better. But perhaps not. Every song has its place and a space that holds its sound best, where echoes and reverberations harmonize. This is your place. He locked you here. For better and for worse, you are your own shackles. So you see. I'm ready to learn something new. So many memories, so many lifetimes trapped within this place. The weight of it is overwhelming. Return the book. I don't want to start arguing with him about nonsense here. There's only one thing that we can use. Everything else is just nonsense. Let's go. Yes. Now. An obelisk thrusts from the platform like a horn or a claw or a tongue. Its party-colored surface has a shimmer to it and a slick texture, not quite mineral, but not quite organic either. The garish appearance belies something ancient, even wise, that seems to radiate from the obelisk as if it were here at the beginning, or close to it. It retained its youthful energy. Four runes are carved into it, symbols of a civilization that predated the truth. Examine the obelisk. You study the strange protrusion, seeking some meaning in its colorful worlds and patterns. Like all Numenera, its exact nature is hopelessly beyond the ken of latter worlds, but from your training, you have a basic sense of what it might be, some kind of psychic battery, soaring a person's thoughts and memories, or very self. Examine. They are simply shapes, simple shapes, something like a heavy quadruple is what trooped in profile, serpentine double curve, a two tined comb, and a right angled corner. But despite their simplicity, or perhaps because of it, their meaning is inscrutable. They could be simple glyphs depicting actual things from an ancient civilization, or symbolic ideograms, or phonemy, phonemies, or senseless graffiti. They could be a warning or an invitation, a name or an epitaph. So goes man's attempt to instill meaning in the world. Touch it. 
As you lay your hand on the slick surface, the patterns move and swirl like a living living plasma. Actually, no. They're not they aren't moving at all. It was merely a hallucination of some kind. You have a sense that this has happened before, this and more. A memory shifts and contours through your mind like the colors of the obelisk. Just a matter of catching hold of them. Yeah, full success. I'm ready to learn something new. A broad smile spreads across your face as you feel the wisdom welling out from the stone. The two Gibra beside you, who helped scrap centuries of encrustation, encrustation from the stone, sense nothing. From your satchel, you take a fleshy living artifact crafted with various devices and crystals. You lay it on the obelisk and watch as one of the crystals begins to glow faintly, siphoning off the obelisk's psychic emissions. You and you alone will reap the bounty of its teachings. As the memory fades, you sense that the obelisk's energy was dissipated in the time you were, were lost in your own more recent past. The thing that had tapped the obelisk is long gone, but whatever it meant to share has vanished into the ether. Uh, we did get a little bit of experience out of things, but let's start it. Anything. Um, I think we need to keep some kind of an eye on changes yes. that have now happened now. here, if any. I'm, I'm not going forward without Eridus. If we get fucked up a little bit because of that, so be it. But I, I'll not rest uh, as in a sleep. That's not gonna happen. Any, any change to try to notice? Not really. I'm going. We could also not interact with everything in this, just try to find the people. So maybe just take a look at the area before committing to anything. Village pattern. All right. Matkina. Uh, don't really want to take her into the party, so. Why not? I'm not saying I'm not going to come back for her. Just that. We're here Let's to primarily look for Eridus. And there's a thingamajig. Yes. Yes. Nothing to do with us. Uh, I'm not sure. I, I don't have the luxury of rescuing everyone here anyway from their illusion. At the same time, I don't know what the consequence or advantage would be. Polmagor. Trust and honesty are our bonds. Hey! You bet. Why is the Philethes here? Every distance, fist clench and knuckles white at the center of his aura. His golden cloud. It takes you a moment to realize what's different here. He's in a hollow place within the glow, though it is reaching for him with hooked tendrils and jagged spines. Somehow, Eridis is holding the paragons and cathartics at bay. How can I help? I, I don't know. I just know that I can't hold... I can't... Let us in. We had a bargain, Eridis. You can't go back on it just because you didn't agree to it in the first place. Ah. <laughs> uh. Yeah. Let us in. We are in danger out here. We are exposed. It is very cold. We could separate the audience and the area, area and areas for good. I 
Um, I was not expecting this opportunity. This is your mind. Separate the audience and areas for good. What's the consequence of that? The thing is, uh, I think they were supposed to be joined. I mean, it's too late to separate them, really. And we talk about this first. See what they have to say. Leave them alone. The voice echoes and the audience recalls the sound. There is a space within the aura grows. Let us in into him again. Let us make him strong. Weak. Without us he will be useless to you. He will be normal. Fragile. Weak. Pathetic. Uh, I'll take weak and pathetic. He never chose this. Separate the audience and areas for good. Following the wordless urges of your instincts, you plunge your hand into the golden cloud. Bloody crisscrossing lines race over your knuckles and up your arms. The audience has no taste for you. You can sense its horror and disgust at being touched with like this. With a grunt, you tear the cloud away from your companion. The audience screams as one. Honor, glory, hero, punish, error, error. The tiny star flares at the center of the golden cloud in your hands. A mother, and soon a ripple of spider webbing frame raises outward as the nano demons rupture one by one. The flames don't hurt, they tingle. At last, smoke rises from your empty hand and unburnt skin. I think I'm ready to try something new. You return back to Eridis. He's transparent, fading. He's no longer a hero, a fighter, or a champion. What he is, is crying. Grateful tears pour down the herder's face. He raises a single hand to wave goodbye. And Eridis is gone. That was him, wasn't it? The real Eridis. I mean, he was... Glorious. Yeah. So, now we at least... I, 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 I didn't Absolutely. want to... I'm here to help. Yeah, basically need to give him up. He, he was basically a companion. Never wanted this, so yeah. We do have Makina seems to be our only option now. I I I'd rather well want to take her. She has nothing to do with this or at our team. I, I sort of think I yeah. The problem is our only damage dealer just went away. Uh, on the positive side, I think we have a huge amount of ciphers that I haven't been using. There's really no point not using them at this point. I think I'd rather move on with the three-man party than try to force a fourth man into this that never belonged. As far as you can tell, this Philethes looks exactly the same as the one you met before. Perhaps he is the same. As you approach, its hidden body seems to draw a deep breath, but nothing emerges. No words, no noise, no ex elation at all. Its glass mask seems fixed upon you, but it just as easily could be sleeping within. The thing just stands there, as indifferent until suddenly it speaks. How many modes of light spilled upon the ground before you moved the basin? Uh, I think that happened at the start of the game. A few. 
The Pilates... Pilates' glass day shimmers with iridescence for several moments before it speaks again. No. The old calf gets sour milk from its mother's teeth. Those that seek sweet, suckling waste away, but never weep. The yule herder spills salt tears, but the earth thirsts without tasting. Its mask darkens, but its voice carries on with black indifference. Did you drink the light? I left it in the base. Pilates leans its bulk toward you ever so slightly. No, you do not know the light as. Okay, what did the light mean? The thing's voice bar warbles as if with an echo that precedes the sound itself. Eventually, words come. When the question is known, the answer is but the conclusion. Yeah. I'm tired of your shit. Farewell. All right. Gigantic snake statue. Oh, we have that. Why not? As long as we're here, we might as well help these guys. Really, Tolmagor is not gonna join us. Fine. The slaver Tolmagor is here. Her arms flailing across her body. Shades of her tight addicted compatriots flicker around her, substantial as spectres who radiate a burning ephemeral need. Her hands pass through them, and each time she looks as if she is going to vomit. Her feet are buried in the ground, she cannot move. You feel the tides coil within her, within you, perhaps as a response to the hungry ghost that surrounds Tol. Tol, is that you? What's happening to you? He stops biting the sh battling the shades a moment, looking at no through Rin. I thought I heard something, a bird. Then she cries out as another shade flickers near her face. Those ghosts, I know them. They were people addicted to what she did to them. Without me around to temper her powers, she'd kill them. We should help her if we can. She was terrible to me, I know, but she needed me as well. I'm not condoning what she did, I'm just... I want to forgive her. Holmagor covers, covering her head from a fresh attack. She seems completely unaware of either you or... Either of you are even there. Yeah, the shades aren't real, you can fear yourself. We need someone who would have strength focus though now, without Eridis with Eridis gone. We don't have. Even Makina wouldn't be strength focused. Oh fuck. Although everything here happens in my mind, so probably intellect and tidal surges are the key to doing things here. I'm not too worried. I'm more worried about getting up into some kind of a final boss fight with our main damage dealer gone. She struggles and screams against the need of her erstwhile minions, but somehow your words penetrate the barrier to her fear. Of her fear, she opens her eyes and sees you. She reaches out to a hand to you, and a spark of energy flashes between your fingertips. With it, awareness comes to her eyes. Is that my little bird? Unable to speak, Rin only nods. I'm ready to learn something new. The shades fade away from around her, and she mouths silent gratitude. She rests her weary head on the floor of the labyrinth, and sinks into the ground, leaving no trace behind. Okay. Coming. So there isn't all that much here. I guess these are mainly intended for you to get your companions yes. back. <sighs> Wrapped around an aging stone pillar is a plated creature unlike anything you've ever seen. It hisses at the air, but its eyes, rows of them like a spider's, are fixed on you, glittering. It's just a statue, but your body trembles to look at it. It wants something, more than just flesh. 
There's a strong feeling of malevolent intelligence surrounding this statue that you can't explain. Even more worrying, however, is the sense of familiarity you get while looking at it. The creature doesn't fit any kind of classification in the ninth world, and it, and it appears too intelligent to be one of the created Numenera. This thing is a visitant from some other distant world, or perhaps possibly another reality altogether. The feeling of malevolence or predation reminds you strongly of when you first met Dragogen in the boom. You don't understand why this creature would remind of that man, however. Yep. I think I'm ready to try something new. Stats pool spent on effort restored. Yay! Several memories strike you all at once. Not memories of your past life, but those of your siblings. You see yourself prostrate before a creature exactly like the statue, but a larger and more menacing. You are, you are in tears, terrified. The creature stretches out a claw and some invisible force crushes your chest. A flash. Light from the creature's many eyes sears through your retina into your brain. You fall on the floor, aware but unable to move. In another memory, you storm through a burning village in search of some artifact. The memory races forward and you present that artifact to the creature. Another flash. You are kneeling before this creature. It speaks in your mind. Rise, my servant. Today you are no longer a Kassa. You are Dragogen, and you will henceforth speak in my name and carry out my will in this world. The memories bleed, the left trembling. This thing is Dragogen, the real Dragogen, not the man. It uses mortals for its own inscrutable ends, even as mouthpieces as it did with Dragogen you met in the bloom. Several castoffs have crossed it over the centuries. The creature finds the immortality and the greed of your siblings useful, and their disregard for mortal lives convenient. This statue was constructed from their memories. One of them even served as a dragon long ago. Mm, examine it again. Flashes of memory do not repeat, but you know now that this statue is the true dragon. Creature not of the ninth world, which uses mortals for oh, yeah. him. Move side to side and see if the spider like eyes follow you. The eyes remain fixed at the space you were standing before. Perhaps you just happened to notice them when you were standing in the right. With slow and deliberate care, the eyes swivel in their stone sockets and fix on you again. Uh, feel the surface of the statue. You ta reach out to touch the scaled surface. The statue doesn't move and you hear nothing beyond the sound of your breath and yet you feel something watching you from beyond this place. A sudden heat bakes the palm of your hand. Something tells you that touching the statue is a bad idea. Uh, no. Leave it alone. Absolutely. I've trust my instincts before, All right. and assuming the creature is as powerful as we think it is, yeah, I'll, I'll pass. Doesn't mean that it's a necessarily a bad thing, but uh, probably isn't particularly a good thing either. I'll release Makina, see what we can do here with the statue and leave things like that. I guess this is more or less a... Preparation phase until we delve deeper. Matkina holds her weapons tightly and screams. As you come close, the shadows around her solidify. She is relie relieving the horrors of the attack on Calm, and for a moment you are there with her. First, militia lash lashes out with their weapons, and the villagers transform into their monstrous forms again. Her weapons have no effect, and her dying friends uh, gout blood that washes around her boots. The faces in her nightmare change and twist. 
you see the first mask, Hajj face, Melmoth, uh, the Memovira, countless faces, jeering, mocking, spilling their contempt across her. He fights savagely against the faces arrayed against her, each another a stone in a wall of betrayal and mistrust. She is muttering and whimpering as if caught in a living dream, and you can hear her whispers. Traitor, murderer of dreams, butcher, my fault must scatter you, burn you. Okay, I'm here, you don't need to find anymore. I'm here, Neng, she says. The shadows leer and twist around her, a distorted version of Hush's face looming in the air. She raises a flame lance high over her head and strikes swiftly. Akina knocks it aside, punching a knife in the shadow's body. The ferocious heat from the lance washes over you even as the lance vanishes. This illusion is powerful, too powerful to just talk her out of it. In a whisper almost too soft to hear, you hear Makina say, I don't want to fight anymore. Understand how you can help her. Fight. Her illusion is more powerful than it should be. She is aware of you, but just barely. What she needs is to stop fighting, and the only way she's going to do that is if, is if she believes her enemies are dead. Perhaps you need to become one of her enemies. Get close and let her kill you. You step forward, out, arms outstretched. She sees you and attacks, driving her knife into your gut. It's too tortured to hit any vitals, but it still hurts. You come closer and put your arms around her. What? She blinks, noticing you for the first time. Ash? No, who are you? She looks around at shades you can barely see. They're all dead. All of them. I did this. If it weren't for me. Mm. Yeah, this is a dream, remember? Tash tried to help you. Updated my journal. She's not looking at you. She's not talking to you, but then her head snaps back and she sees you for the first time. What are... what are you doing... here? He steps out of your arms and quickly sheaths her weapon. Why the Black Three? That's embarrassing. Suppose I owe you gratitude for getting me out of that. Yeah, you... are you a friend though? No, you know you're not. I don't want to choose that. All I need... I need all the help I can get from for what's coming next. Ah, uh, that's probably true. Maybe I should take her with us. It's not like I would be taking her as a friend, just... I need all the help I can get at that place. Ah, crap. Yeah, I don't think my character would refuse help at this point. This is... everything is on their line here. Just because she isn't a friend does not mean she couldn't help. I need all the help I can get. He flashes a smirk. Couple extra plays to go do go over well in negotiations, don't they? Makes sense. Got a plan in mind? Hmm. Yeah, I could use a helping hand. Between that and rot down here, not much of a choice. I'm with you. Good, I'm ready. Right. Uh, what exactly you need can me? you do? Here too. Yeah, I, I forgot about this. She's not useful in combat sense, but I could use an extra hand. Basically, in a crisis, someone to do something. She could 
definitely benefit from some of the attack ciphers too. I, I wouldn't use her to attack, but yeah. Absolutely. I'm not particularly interested in talking to Matkina. Others hey, more stranger, so. What do you need? How have you been? How have I been? How do you summarize a decade of life? She runs a hand through her hair. You know the pale line where her scar used to be. Life has been good, friend. I fight now, as you can see, our protector. Not for any love of the work, I grant you, but for love, absolutely. But you have given me so much more. My guards are strong. I've learned a I've learned of a thing, something my parents never taught me, and are not even sure if they believe, that the bonds of love make us stronger. She chuckles to herself and brings out a worn, familiar stone. Some of Baranthus think I'm crazy, yet they cannot argue with the strength of my gods, can they? Uh, he tosses the stone in the air and slips it back into her pocket. So, how are you holding up? Are you kidding? I'm relieving the scariest, greatest part of my childhood. There's no place I'd rather be. Okay. I be hell of a thing, your mind. Maybe you should have cleaned up a little before inviting people over. Hmm. I wasn't expecting guests. Well, I'll try not to peek into many of your cupboards, so to speak. Pumping the corner of his eyes, he says, I have a feeling that if I kick a stone, you'll forget how to eat custard or soil yourself. Neither option appeals. He appears to the back of his neck. He rubs the back of his neck. Anyway, did you need something? Uh, you don't seem to be bewildered by all this. Well, no. I spend a lot of time in people's heads, not just in the traditional sense. I once went to a dance held in the mind of a dying friend. Not find, mind you, a bit more, bit morbid, and the dance floor kept shrinking. Her mind was smaller than this too. Nothing against her, but she could have taken some decoration tips from you. So this isn't strange to you for you at all. No, it's definitely strange, but not unusual. You know how it is, right? As apparently, I do. Let's go. Absolutely, I'm here to help. You look up. The stone figure looks down, holding a circular symbol in its hands. Hair, or perhaps tendrils, curl from the edges of the hood that covers most of the creature's angular face. Abstract patterns race along the folds and wrinkle of the wrinkles of the figure's robes. Examine. It's not immediately apparent who the statue portrayed. Perhaps this was a major figure in another cast of slides, and found its way here somehow? You may never know. The symbol itself is a collection of shapes, a cross with a square inside a circle. It seems familiar now that you look at it more closely. It's not a simple stone either, it's... You draw a thoughtful breath. Memory, tangled in stone, a system of bounded power echoing upon itself. Okay, examine it again. You have no idea who the mirror is. Touch the circle. You lay your hand upon the square and... Okay, did I choose the square accidentally? I chose the square. Fuck. A visible fo A vision falls upon you, showing you a single figure kneeling at the peak of a jagged pile of bones. You cannot tell if it is a man or a woman, but the cast-off tattoo is clearly visible. All you can hear are the whispered words, Thank you, thank you, thank you. You release the square and the vision fades. Uh, circle? You brush your hands against the circle and a vision unfolds in your arms, showing you a ghostly woman's face, the same ghostly woman you met in the calm of your mind. Anguish fades from her, then the translucent light. Before long, her face is flesh once more. 
He released the circle and the vision fades. A cross? A vision cracks open in your mind, showing you a billowing, towering creature, screaming with a thousand mouths. She is devouring herself. She is the Avenger, targeted for revenge, and she is dying. He released. Okay. Hold the symbol free. You lay both hands upon the symbol, pull and vision unfolds before your eyes. You tower over the world, crossing it with great invisible strides. Faces blur beneath you, a sea of them, but all of them have one thing in common. No cast off tattoos. You and your siblings are nowhere to be seen. The image fades when you release the symbol firmly held in the statue's grip. Nonetheless, you still feel the rough edges of it in your palms, if only for a second. Okay. Yes. Alright. I'm there. We're in good shape. I need to just level these guys up and we'll leave things there. I don't see why we would want to even go anywhere else at this point. We'll basically delve into the maze we were supposed to go in the first place. And I don't see how this could have any real negative effects. I mean, are you supposed to just go alone instead of just getting your companions? Uh, I don't think so. So. Rin! What good things can you take for yourself? Blood and the Bell. Relativistic damage. Um, gravity manipulation? No. Maybe skills. Medium weapons. That might not be a bad thing because uh, he has a medium range weapon, right? Right. So, the thing is, we don't have a fighter anymore. So, Green could try to compensate for that. The weapon she has isn't terrible. So, maybe a little bit of a. It's only accuracy though. But yeah, I think I'll actually do exactly that. Makina is the weakest link. She'll be. I, I think she'll be the last cast off aid in doing whatever we need to do in that challenge. The fighting will be left to Tiber and Marine. Which edge? Speed edge, please. No, no, no. Not necessarily. Intellect edge might not be a bad thing because we do want to have the issue challenge. And it actually needs to be pumped a little bit to work. And I, I don't recall having problems with speed. Tier 5. The miss of human capacity. One active until next leap. More movement, more initiative, more effort, more opponents to attack. Cause quite a bit though. More max effort, max skill, bonuses, ignores flank at all. Uh, Don't I already have this? Probably not. Uh, what exactly do I have then? I'm pretty sure Tiber had Roller. But apparently no, so I'll take it again. I'm not too attached to the other abilities either, so... I need to make sure that we have the roller. Um, why... I don't... This is Tiber. Why does Tiber get anamnesis? Yeah, something, something is not right. 
concentration they can't leave. We lost the negatives. Negatives to our Right, so we'll get plus 30% evasion training, but didn't get the negatives. Very, very, very nice. You. What to do with you? Extra effort or increased edge? Um, I'd actually maybe try to. I don't think intelligent edge makes any sense anymore. Might, might, because I, I think I might be the strongest one in the group at this point. Did I learn that? Or remember it? Very close to another level up. Ooh. Means I can get the extra effort. Also, six tier. Doesn't. No. You would imagine that there's something useful in that six tier. Okay, not not that bad. Not that bad at all. Do I want the impossible blade though? Out of curiosity, can Rin even use a melee weapon? No, she's she has her bow and that's it. Light weapons, right. Bright light light range weapon. This might be better. It does more damage and it wouldn't put her in such great danger. I mean her armor and resistance is the is the shit burden that I haven't had in a long time. Yeah, she probably was a companion because she liked me, or god knows why. Okay, I'll accept that. She's a temporary ally that we found here. Not a true companion or a friend. But still. Right, path to the resonance. Final delving to the end of the game. Um, I do want to make one thing sure. I want the stat recovery items to be on everyone. We need speed, yes. Mm. Speed and intellect, not really might. Do I have might recovery? I'm the only one who's really in here. I have plenty of it. Which means I can spread the fun around a bit. Everyone uses intellect. That's not how you do it. I can give the weaker ones to her. Take them both. I have the stronger ones. I think I have a full recovery item too. Everyone has to have a, a single healing injection. Speed recovering. Right. As far as I can see, the situation is about as good as it's going to get. Ah, <sighs> okay. Uh, ooh, I need to have an ornament. Extra defenses, so good for her. Do I have the. I've used all my. Permanent boost abilities. What now? That are long lasting boosts. Okay. Flex skill. Definitely anything that helps the body. I'm ready for whatever comes. Okay, we're ready. At least as ready as we're gonna get, moment, so. And it's done. 